I am a feminist journalist. I'm a media critic. That's my background. And uh, sort of halfway through my career, I also became a media activist and a media justice activist in particular. So today, I'm going to talk not only about the importance of getting our messages into all manner of media, print, broadcast, online, corporate media, independent media, uh, new media, but also the need to transform the systems that control and create that media. Um, and I want to start off by saying that no matter what issue silo you focus on, no matter what is your most primary concern, what moves you, what's your momentum, um, Media should be your second issue. Media should be interwoven into everything you do, everything you care about, because there is absolutely no way that any of us will achieve gender, racial, social, economic justice without media justice. So that's what, that's, well, thank you. Um, that's the overarching frame through which I approach media justice work and through which I approach doing journalism and new media and blogging and et cetera and creating spaces for other women to do the same. But before I get into the meat of all of that, um, I want to open with a question to all of you. How many of you know that on September 11th, 2006, a man in this country got into a car, filled a container with gasoline and intentionally drove his car headfirst into a building in Davenport, Iowa, intending to blow it up and die in the fire? Anyone? Would it surprise you that on September 11th, 2006, this happened and not one national print, broadcast, or online media outlet, except for about 30 seconds on Keith Olbermann, talked about it at all? No one covered it? Would that surprise you? No? Well, I'm sur I was a little, uh, I'm surprised that it doesn't surprise you. Um, <laughs> Because on 9-11 on a, on a, um, and about a month before and about a month after, corporate media go crazy trying to peg every single possible story to terrorism. You know, the better to stoke fear, the better to sell papers, bring in ratings, etc. But the reason that this particular story was not picked up, even though an AP wire local story sent it out nationally so every outlet in the country could have picked it up, was that the guy in question, the homegrown terrorist, was a guy named David McMenemy, a white man who uh, intended to drive his car into the Edgerton Women's Health Clinic to stop the baby killing. Um, when it didn't actually blow up, he only caused about $250,000 of damage to a, a clinic that, oops, didn't even provide abortions, but provided low-income uh, OBGYN and prenatal care, et cetera, to low-income women. Um, it was not covered. No one, the only uh, coverage of all, at all was three local stories in Davenport, Iowa, as if this is just a local color story for you know, this tiny little community and not national news. And even those three stories did not call this an act of terrorism after 40 some odd years of strategic, coordinated acts of clinic violence, harassment of doctors, targeting, shootings, fire bombings, arson, et cetera. Um, and the reason that I start with that, the fact that that kind of news is not considered news, is because the only reason it's not considered news is because the target of the violence is women and women's rights. And we know, right, you know what, how that would have been splashed over every single headline, every single cable news pundit would have been foaming at the mouth if David was not named David, but if David had been Muslim or Arab. You know how that story would have been played, right? So. Um, thinking, about, uh, thinking about war and terrorism and news coverage of war and terrorism reminds me of uh, another key issue that comes up for me as a media critic and a feminist. Um, media coverage of war is almost never framed as if it's relevant to women. We heard yesterday an incredibly powerful speech about the nature and strategic use of violence against women and torture of women as not only a war crime but a, a, a way of doing war. An, you know, absolutely in, sort of intrinsic into the way war happens now, right? Media almost never talk about, women, about war as if it's relevant to women. Um, except when it does come up, uh, it's often in the context of justifying U.S. actions. So, for example, I'm just going to read you a, a small uh, quote. Um, in 2005, on Meet the Press, it was guest hosted that week by uh, David Gregory, a uh, former CIA 
uh, Spook, um, whose name was a very kind of complicated German name that I'd butcher, so I won't tell you his name. You can, I'll, you can ask me in the open space. Um, he was asked as that little tangent, most pundits brought on to Sunday morning talk shows are either from uh, government sources or corporate sources, very, very rarely independent sources, very, very rarely progressive sources. Only 14% of Sunday morning talk show guests are women. And a huge percentage of that 14% are Condoleezza Rice. Seriously. <laughs> I'm not joking. There's studies about this. Um, but flashback, you know, now go back to Meet the Press in 2005 when uh, this CIA guy was asked to comment on the U.S. backing changes to the Iraqi Constitution that imposed Sharia law and fundamental, allowed fundamentalist clerics in Iraq for the first time to control and limit women's rights in every area, social, political, economic, physical, marriage, property ownership, etc., cetera, um, and jeopardizing women's fundamental human rights. And like a CIA analyst would say, this was the quote, actually, I'm not terribly worried about this. There's no discussion of women not having the right to vote. In the year 1900, for example, in the United States, it was a democracy then. In 1900, women did not have the right to vote. If Iraqis could develop a democracy that resembled America in the 1900s, I think we'd all be thrilled. I mean, women's social rights are not critical to the evolution of democracy. So, that, that gasp is the normal response, or should be the normal response to that kind of statement, right? Did, Dick Re did uh, David Gregory ask Grill any kind of follow-up question, any kind of uh, clarification? No. Simply thanked the guest, bumped to commercial, and left the public with the deeply misogynistic th idea that women's rights have no fundamental value to democracy.